What is GFX, you might ask? Well, here's NPS professor Ray Bittner to explain. Ray? The Joint Interagency Field Experimentation Program that the Naval Postgraduate School runs here at Camp Roberts in our McMillan Field facility is sponsored by the Office of Secretary of Defense, ATNL. And our goal is to help the combatant commanders, the six geographic combatant commanders and the three supporting combatant commanders, to refine, define, create, and destroy requirements so that we get the, uh, the right equipment, the right technology out to the warfighter. The companies learn what the military and, and our interagency partners really need, and uh, we learn what the technology capability might really be. So we can make the requirements so when an acquisition occurs, because this is not an acquisition activity, it's a learning activity, when acquisition occurs, we're more likely to get the right equipment. And some of the companies out here have literally spent millions of their own research dollars to make the products better match what we need in the government, what we need in the government, what we need in the government, what we need in the government. Now a lot of our research of course at the Naval Postgraduate School ends up in direct support of the warfighter. Let's talk about how these are used and, and how we see them being used in the future to support the warfighter. One of the key things are the future concepts associated with large numbers of uh, unmanned systems, unmanned systems working with manned systems, uh, unmanned systems working with human personnel, and so the idea in this particular case is to be able to understand what a saturation attack might look like, whether that's in, uh, in, in a variety of different contexts you might see such a thing occur. And uh, in order to defend against such types of saturation attacks, we might be able to better employ our unmanned system technologies, especially those that might be lower cost, uh, to be able to effectively de defeat those types of um, those types of threats. Well, while we're in the sky, let's take a look at the instant eye. Tom, tell us a little bit about this particular vehicle. I certainly will. This is uh, instant eye. Uh, the total system is the ground station and the aircraft, as you see here. It's about a one-pound uh, autonomous airplane uh, that we've developed primarily for the uh, military, but we're also now looking at uh, using it with first responders uh, and, and other organizations. And what kind of uh, duration does this have in flight, and how does it work? And, and talk a little bit about the components, the camera components. Absolutely. So it has about 20 minutes of endurance. Uh, it's a hovering platform, uh, so it doesn't need to orbit. You can put it over a target and hover over that target. Uh, we've flown it in all weather, so we've flown it in rain, snow, high winds. Uh, actually, Hurricane Sandy, we were out flying in Hurricane Sandy uh, and operating there to show that we could fly in that kind of environment. The system is primarily designed to give you uh, real-time video. So from the operator perspective, when he's using the ground controller, he doesn't know it's an airplane. It just happens to be a camera in the sky. We have three cameras on the system. We have a forward-looking wide field of view. We have a 45 wide field of view. And we have a downward-looking camera. This one also has uh, a payload adapter that's been added to it. This is a thermal imaging camera, uh, that, so we can use this at nighttime uh, and also during the day uh, to look for thermal contrast. So you can find people, you can you can find people, you can you can find people, you can you can find people, you can, you can find other objects as long as there's thermal contrast. The way you typically operate the system uh, is when you're coming in on a, an object of interest, you'll come in using the forward-looking camera. Uh, as it starts to fall out of your field of view, you go to the 45 and then ultimately to the downward looking. Again, as a hovering vehicle, you sit over the target and you can collect that real-time imagery on the ground station. Now, obviously, this can be of a great importance to the warfighter. How extensively are these kinds of things being used now by, by the company that you work for and produce? Uh, we are producing these uh, several systems per week uh, that are going to the warfighters right now. Uh, we are currently uh, in exercises down at Fort Benning, the Army Expeditionary Warrior Experiments, uh, where this is being used by actual soldiers, specialist first class, uh, both in the infantry and the scouts. Uh, we have systems downrange with, with other organizations, uh, and they're using that from a, a surveillance and a recon kind of application. Up next is Hugh Middleton to explain to us a little bit about the research with metal detectors. Hugh, tell us a little bit about your project and your company and what you're doing here at GIFX. Our, our product that we brought to GIFX is our TACX, our Tactical Site Exploitation Metal Detector. It is a wireless Bluetooth capable device that we've been able to this week and last week during the Tassoa event integrate it into the talk via Raptor X. So everything that this is picking up, whether it's video, still photo, and the metal detection, and their intensity all ends up in the talk so you can capture that in a common operating picture. 
So ultimately, a lot of the things that, that are done here are support national security and the warfighter. What are the various applications you would use for this, and can you kind of walk us through the process? Sure. Uh, there's a few that come to mind. Uh, Village Stability Operations, VSO. Uh, if the leadership is inside meeting with the locals in their leadership and the external security guys are out speaking to the villagers and the, uh, and the other locals, and they're scanning. They're looking for weapons caches. Has the Taliban buried something overnight in between the meetings? Uh, looking for cell phones looking for IED components, whether C4 that's got caps in it or wires, in uh, those situations. Also, it can be used for entry control point, ECPs, where you're able to put the personnel sweep wand on and you can get some standoff where you're not having to get in this danger area with a standard uh, hand detector. And you're also able not only to capture and scan for metal, if he has a weapon on him or what have you, or, or and or you can also collect biometric data because you're able to take pictures, video and still photos, send that all back to the talk where now the leadership inside the talk can go, wait, wait a minute, this is somebody we've been looking for. You guys may, may want to detain him. That's great. Well, let's take a look and have you show us how it works, some of the things you were just talking about and, and see it in action. So you've got the screen, you're able to scan, again, take pictures, say I'm scanning this block here. Nothing, you can tell nothing. Now we've got a detection here. You can tell by the intensity of the tone, the intensity of the detection. So it's something could be fairly large, small, but you know, as you scan in, you're getting no tones here. No tones, no tones. Okay, now it's picking up. So you know that there's, a, there's an object that's in there. So also again, you're able to mark that spot. This is all going back to the talk and being read on Raptor X. You're able to, now I'm videoing. All the video is going back to the talk. You're able to video the object. And you're also able to capture still photos. Again, this is all going back to the top for operational awareness for the commanders in there. On turn line, entering containment area, clear to arm. Okay, we're armed.